Hey folks, so I thought I'd do another shop tour. Haven't done one in a, oh, several months, so I figure it's time. It is now summer, or pretty much summer. It's uh, the end of May of 2024. So just show you the place a bit here. Got uh, Still got this window, which unfortunately, every time somebody tends to move it, it cracks somewhere. So now it's got a couple more cracks than it did which is uh, probably half my fault because it's not in a frame, which is the way I bought it. So, yeah. So anyway, it's gotten a couple other cracks and I'm going to have to sell it at a reduced price. But uh, hopefully somebody will fall in love with it or uh, has the skill to fix it and picks it up. Anyway, so here we go. I've uh, sold, sold a fair bit since... Uh, Last did the video and bought a fair bit as well, so there's lots of other stuff around. So yeah. Anyway, still got this rocker, or these two rockers. I'd like to get rid of them soon. Um, surprising, like I said, brown furniture or the old press backs and uh, this type of furniture doesn't sell very quickly anymore. So keep that in mind if you're doing any buy-in of furniture. And uh, this room is filling up a little bit too much. It's starting to get a little bit on the uh, cluttered side. So I'm uh, wanting to get some stuff sold. But uh, I could rearrange it a little bit and get it dealt with. But uh, ever since I sold that big corner cabinet uh, about a month or so ago, um, a lot of the smalls, of course, have to find places to go. So, anyway, they tend to get scattered about and it kind of adds to the clutter feeling. But, anyway, I try to keep it as neat as I can. It's kind of an ongoing thing. Um, blow mold wise, uh, the fellow still has to pick up his Santa Claus. Uh, but the. Uh, candy cane, another candy cane, the angel, and the pheasants are sold. So they're going to be going, uh, oh, probably next Monday. So they're going to be gone. So that'll be good. Make a little bit of space. Can condense this a little bit. Still got the Halloween stuff. Three ghosts um, and three sets of pumpkins here. So anyway, let's go to the foyer. It's a bit crowded as well. Um, I'm thinking at some point I still want to get rid of this seed cleaner or seed treater rather. This red wood thing here. Um, I'm probably going to donate it to a museum is what's going to happen. So I'd like to move it along. But uh, I've got to arrange to uh, maybe do a thrift shop run and run it at the same time to uh, the Austin Thresherman's Museum or Threshing Museum, or Agricultural Museum, something like that. <laughs> anyway, but uh, yeah, so, and these benches of course take up room. Uh, I could put them outside every day, but I've been lazy and haven't put them out uh, in a little bit. So anyway, we got Sold all those saw blades that were in this corner. I've since bought a couple more, but all the other ones were gone, as well as the big long saws. So they went. So that was good. And uh, one of the big doors, I had a big door here. It's gone as well. Since then, I bought several crocs, as you saw in the previous room. And we'll go into the main shop. And I've uh, been putting up more art on the walls as I sell some. So the walls always look full. Um, we've got a McCaskill up here. Another McCaskill here. He was a photographer uh, from the East Coast, Nova Scotia area. So yeah. Um, got tons of barn lamps now. Um, I had a but one particular pick where I got a bunch of them. So you'll see that in one of the hoarder farm videos. So yeah. Um, 
despite having these hung up, I haven't sold any. Um, yeah, I'm surprised, but I uh, haven't sold any. I guess it really matters if, uh, obviously, somebody's changing out their fixtures or restoring a home. So, yeah. Anyway, did sell uh, some of my enamel shades uh, off of, I think, mainly because of Facebook Marketplace ad, but uh, uh, did add another shelf unit here. Uh, you may have seen that in one of the videos. And, yeah. So, yeah, I've added stuff to the walls. It's kind of an ongoing, constant thing, shifting that stuff around and uh, putting up various bits as I get them. So, yeah. Stocking up slowly again on register grates. I'd sold quite a few of them. Now I've got a few more. I'm sure they'll go quickly at one point once people realize I've got them in. Uh, added another shelf to the top of that as well. Another bin. So, yeah. But, uh, got a little bit of space here and there for the architectural stuff. Like I said, I've got these extra bins, so I can probably move some of these uh, lamp fixtures off this showcase top. Should probably do that at some point. Um... I'd like to actually replace this entire case. This is an old refrigerator unit that was here when I bought the building. And it's just so heavy. <laughs> so bulky and so heavy that I didn't want to even move it. Um, I couldn't lift it myself, obviously. And I would have to, I think, disassemble it to actually uh, get rid of it. So it's a major undertaking. So it's, it's semi-useful in its state here. Um, I've been on the lookout for glass shelves in order to maximize the space a bit better. But I haven't found anything that's suitable yet. And uh, I've got brackets that'll fit though. So eventually I'll end up doing that. Got lots of bins of hardware still of course so if you're looking for electrical hardware you're looking for architectural hardware I've still got lots of that stuff around always adding to it I just bought a big bin of hardware from an auction um, so I've got a lot of oh, 1950s new old stock hardware as well drawer handles and poles that sort of thing but of course I got lots of, of this sort of stuff now um, new old stock usually in those types of color tones in brasses and there's a little bit of chrome uh, mostly bronze though or different tones of bronze but yeah and you've got i think i maybe mentioned this before but i've got parts for uh percolators and such uh the Vacuum coffee pot filters. I've got stuff for them right there, and uh, some of the brass ones or uh, stainless steel ones as well. Uh, I've got one porcelain one there that require a filter to be wrapped around them. So, yeah. And, yeah, so I'd like to get another showcase in here to put in the back in a space that I've got. I'll show it to you in a little bit. Or the uh, space, rather. But uh, still got so much stuff. It's surprising what's in here. Um, it kind of makes me wonder what's going to happen when I have to liquidate the entire shop uh, down the road when I'm unable to do this anymore. Um, hopefully that's many years in the future. But uh, I just attended the uh, auction of the other shop. And they hadn't been in business anywhere near as long as I have. And don't didn't have as much stuff as I've got. Although they did have a lot of tools and such. Because the fellow had been doing a lot of um, 
handyman work and uh, such for a while and maintenance and that sort of thing, property maintenance. So he had tools and the like. But um, they had a ton of stuff. And it was a long auction from 8 a.m. till, well, by the time people cashed out and everything, it was about 9 o'clock at night. So the auction started at 10 a.m. and went till about 8, I think it was, maybe a little little later. So yeah, um, and some stuff went pretty cheap, you know, $2, $5 type thing. Some stuff went okay. Um, like I said, it kind of concerns me as to what's going to happen when I have to liquidate. Um, I've got quite a bit that has some, some more value than some of the other some of that stuff did but I don't know hopefully hopefully there'll be a large crowd in attendance when I have my auction <laughs> if there's live auctions even um, things are going to the point where it's all online uh, this one auctioneer that did the live auction is trying to revive uh, live auctions um, and so his auctions are all live uh, no internet sales um, so hopefully hopefully those continue um, but I guess we'll see live auctions like I said are have gone kind of the way the dodo around here I noticed there's still lots in the US but here most of them have gone to the uh, uh, internet format um, timed auctions and seven you know seven day type things or ten day auctions online so it's not as fun it's become work all those going through 600 listings uh, of auctions tend to be a lot of work you know you're sitting on your computer for several hours just going through each lot trying to decide whether you know <laughs> whether they're worth bidding on or whatever and uh yeah so it's really tough it's no longer fun it's it's like i said it's become work um, um just it's just just not fun anymore <laughs> i used it used to be a social event type thing the live auctions and now with the other ones you're just sitting on your butt rather than getting out in the fresh air um yeah Excuse the mess on the top here. I've been sorting out hardware and such, and so I've kind of left a bit of a mess there. So I do have to get a bunch more stuff on the website because that's uh, there's only 400 listings I think on the website right now, and I'd like to get a few more or quite a few more up there. Anyway, we'll in the back here, you know. So I've got, slowly filling this up, this has got a ton of prints and uh, posters and calendars and that sort of thing. A little tough to show you, uh, oh, there's a lot of empty ones here. <laughs> okay, those are all empty. Uh, but yeah, here we go, start again. Anyway, got calendars and such here, but anyway, got lots of bits. Got uh, still got lots of space to kind of put up um, pictures and such up here, but the problem is behind that is the ventilation, the um, furnace ventilation, and. Uh, it's just a thin wood paneling so i have to use a special hook on all of those to uh put put up stuff and so on and when you're nailing stuff up there the hammer bounces because it's there's no structure behind the paneling at all but anyway all my first world problems for you <laughs> anyway um yeah so I've got lots of area histories they've been really adding up um i've got a whack of them up here now a lot of manitobas i've got tons of them 
um, this stuff here I'd like to rearrange this area I need to get a tall shelf to put here right there and uh, move a lot of this stuff over and clear this corner out and I do want to get a proper showcase that is visible on at least three sides if not all four sides uh, to go there right in the, the center area here to display stuff but it's got to be the right case and it's got to be fairly narrow and about oh mid chest high maybe a little lower maybe waist high so we gotta wait until I find the right one anyway yeah so it just takes time it's all gradual it happens and eventually so it's just waiting for the right stuff to come up <clears throat> excuse me to come along lots of mustache cups if you need mustache cups and mine are priced pretty cheap they're 10 and 15 dollars mustache cups used to sell for 35 40 dollars a piece but unfortunately the people that were collecting them have passed on or are divesting of their collections or just not buying anymore so but I've got lots I got these recently these little cupies the other day but these again they used to be high they used to be a QP like this used to be about $45 now I got them marked at 15 you know so things change you've got to adapt in this business or you die <laughs> or your business dies rather you don't die but but uh, yeah um, you really need to adapt and a lot of this stuff you'll see here porcelain and glass isn't selling very well um, some of it does there's a little there's little niche areas in here that stuff does sell but but a lot of it doesn't move very fast so I'm kind of slowing down and buying that sort of thing there's a lot of stuff I don't buy anymore um, things like gone with the wind lamps that used to be two or three thousand dollars at auction are now going for 350 and a tough sell you can sell the parts for more than you can the entire lamp these days but yeah it's kind of strange or not really strange it's it's just the market is changing um, you've got uh, generations that are getting older and uh, some of them are to the point where they're retiring and divesting of stuff rather than you know rather than buying uh, the baby boomers are getting older you know they're reti retired and uh, divesting of merchandise and collections and possessions rather than buying more so you've got a huge population bubble there that has changed the market um, they used to drive the collectibles market quite a bit and that's changing so yeah um, it's an interesting business it's uh, it's been interesting in in the life for me as well just uh, watching the the trends change and uh, and things that have happened in my my existence in the business I've had quite a few uh, various events and uh, things happen in life that uh, have colored my way of thinking and such but uh yeah if uh you didn't know my mantra is shit happens and life goes on um yeah because <laughs> I've, I've had a few traumatic <clears throat> rather traumatic events in life to uh that i went through business related in some cases and uh yeah it's uh definitely uh changed my path on how i got here um i wouldn't wouldn't be out here if i hadn't uh gotten involved with one lady wouldn't be back in this area i'd probably still be in winnipeg area and i i don't think it's that bad that i ended up here it's kind of a retirement type feeling in a way things are a lot slower paced here in this area 
and uh, I don't don't mind it actually right now but uh, you know it's the events and such that I had to deal with kind of haven't uh, <laughs> haven't uh, left me in great emotional health before but uh, I've come out of that luckily so yeah life has changed quite a bit anyway this is the automotive area <clears throat> excuse me talking too much I guess here um, yeah got to tidy it up a little bit more here but uh, don't lots of cool stuff you can pause the video at any time to uh, get a good look at something and if you do see something you're interested in do message me the email should be in the main page under a um, I think it's a contact me tab something like that um, but anyway it or maybe under details or something I forget now but anyway you can find my contact information there or you can check and check out the shop page on Facebook I haven't updated a lot of the photos and such on Facebook uh, just hasn't been worth it so I haven't really updated them but you can contact me through my shop page on Facebook fedoraantiques.com or <laughs> that the website is fedoraantiques.com you can contact me through that too if you like uh, but you can contact me through Messenger on Facebook as well under Fedora Antiques and Collectibles. So you can catch me there. So anyway, here's more stuff. If you're looking for a particular John Deere man <clears throat> excuse me, John Deere manual, there's several I've got lots here for several different tractors and implements. And got this side got these neat folk art horses they probably were mounted on a board at one point but uh, unfortunately don't have the mounting bases at this point and I've got the uh, Aladdin Alakite electric lamps primitives and folk art and bits and pieces here and there a bit of native beadwork um, yeah bicycle parts if you need bike parts I need to do a cull of this stuff and get some of the more modern bits out of it and just sell sell it on um, <clears throat> excuse me on Facebook marketplace um, yeah I've got a bit of scouting stuff here hockey bits and pieces there some hockey equipment and sports equipment um, yeah Could use a little bit of a tidy up like I said it's kind of an ongoing thing we're always constantly uh, constantly doing tidying of some sort there's always dusting to do <laughs> of course but uh, it's not as dusty as my shop that was on um, Portage Avenue in Winnipeg when I was there in the 1990s being right on the main drag of in Winnipeg there was really dusty for some reason you know it just uh, I was dusting constantly there and vacuuming constantly so this shop is a little more relaxed than that one but uh, I've got more merchandise I think in here than I did in Winnipeg but uh, yeah and merchandise has changed of course uh, <clears throat> I still like the advertising and such and it's hot right now too so mainly at mainly signs and some tins and that sort of thing as well but I've got a lot of high croft mixed in here it's mainly high croft there's there's some just restaurant wear and a few bits that are just literally um, just at restaurant wear regular restaurant wear but uh, the stuff in behind is all high croft that's a pottery that was in um, Alberta lots of stuff so but yeah got tons and tons and tons here 
and yeah I'd like to sell more it's I was saying a little back I didn't finish my thought uh, welcome to my ADHD world but um, anyway the uh, I found that there's so much value in here there's so much money um, I can sell two or three or four thousand dollars worth of stuff and it doesn't make a dent or not much of a noticeable dent unless it's big bulky stuff um, yeah so there's a lot of money in here I would not be surprised in the least if there was half a million dollars worth of inventory in here I would not be surprised at all maybe more once you do the retail aspect of the inventory and all um, and then what does it sell for when it gets shipped to auction is dramatically lower um, so yeah that kind of concerns me in the, the long run um, I don't have good luck at auctions anyway but I guess if I'm dead and gone it's not gonna matter so yeah so what happens after I'm gone, I guess, isn't going to really matter. But uh, I'm not, uh, while I'm here, I'm really not willing to send everything to auction if I had the uh, chance or opportunity. I'd like to sell, if I, <laughs> if I did decide to get out of the business, which is highly unlikely, uh, unless I become ill of, with, you know, some terminal illness, I would be... I'd want to sell it kind of on block lot, like as a, a whole business. And somebody could purchase the entire inventory and building and such um, and do it that way. Although I do live in the back, so that, that kind of makes it difficult. But but yeah, I would would want to sell kind of the inventory in in its entirety rather than selling it by auction. You know, there'd be obviously a heavy discount because it'd have to be at a wholesale level. But, uh, and some stuff I can afford this deep discount. Some stuff I can't necessarily, but uh, if I were dying or something, I suppose I would uh, want to sell it um, or would sell it at a much deeper discount, just have it gone. But hopefully that never happens. Hopefully it never happens. But uh, life does throw you curves. You know, I've had a few of them thrown my way. And, uh, yeah. So, life, like I said, does, life does happen. And uh, life is, as they say, life is what happens when you're making plans. So life uh, can, uh, can, have some bumpy roads <laughs> so but you got to roll with the punches as they say so hopefully I'm not depressing you <laughs> hopefully you're just enjoying the stuff and uh, ignoring my banter my muttering <laughs> but yeah I could set the whole thing to music I suppose Maybe next time I'll do that. I'll just set the tour to music. But uh, finding some uh, YouTube friendly music that's not going to end up with copyright issues has, is either going to cost me money or uh, just isn't uh, easy to find something that is suitable or that is uh, enjoyable while I'm uh, doing this sort of video got oh, this China down here is from the Burden Hospital as well if you're local um, got lots of little bits and pieces in these cases that are really cool a lot of Winnipeg memorabilia again um, so just if you happen to be from Winnipeg and are collecting Winnipeg stuff, let me know. Almost knocked over something there. Um, yeah. But, uh, 
lots of stuff this is a neat poster here uh, this is from uh, prohibition type air type uh, period conservative convention involves a liquor policy that would make for greater temperance in Manitoba that's a conservative government's uh, agenda at the time we got lots of little cool bits and pieces in here so but, uh, yeah okay on to the vintage clothing area Does anybody need a Homburg that's what that style hat's called by the way so this is area you may have seen in another video um, I did a little bit of cleanup and such in here and got caps out still got to finish up it that'll be a gradual thing I'm not too worried about it I do have to get some more of this this priced I gotta get in here and just start tagging but uh, all the hats and stuff are priced but a lot of the clothes I seem to be missing the tags on them thought I had a lot of it priced apparently I don't but whatever can't get it all done but uh, I like to have everything priced it's very difficult for somebody to make a decision if your stuff is not priced so keep that in mind if you're opening a store don't rely on people asking you how much something is um, as a dealer like I said I like to be able to make a decision so asking what everything is it just isn't uh, conducive to doing a lot of business if your stuff is priced you'll do a lot more business than if it's not priced like I said people can't make a decision if something's not tagged and then you've also got the perception whether it's correct or not some people will automatically assume that what you're doing is bumping up price based on who they are or you know how they're dressed or vehicle they're driving or whatever you know they will uh, try to get the most out of you they can or that's the feeling that uh, people people have when your uh, stuff isn't priced um, whether that's correct or not whether that's what your intent is or not that's the perception so you should just be aware of that always tag your stuff whenever possible I know it's not 100% possible all the time you get fresh stuff in and you want to get it out but try to price it try to get it out priced so yeah I try to make sure everything's priced the odd thing does get missed or the odd tag does fall off but basically 98 percent of my stuff is priced so I do miss the odd thing when I first set up I did have stuff that wasn't tagged because it was just a matter of trying to get everything unpacked but uh, you really sh should get stuff priced like I said you'll sell a lot more oh talking about not priced I've got two lamps here that aren't priced okay got to get on those maybe three four lamps here no nope, this one's priced so yeah I got to price those two so yeah you know and hey they haven't sold that's could be why because they're sitting there not priced so always price your stuff it's a good piece of advice you know even at flea markets and such best to price your stuff because people just a lot of people don't want to ask you know when I see something that's not priced if it's a single item that's not priced and everything else is priced even then I'll hedge and maybe not even ask but it is worth asking but if your entire table's not priced how are people supposed to make a decision you know it's really tough um, yeah so I can't make a decision based on something that's not tagged but and like I said you can't ask about everything on the table if there was 
30 items on the table you're interested in, are you really going to ask 30 times what stuff is priced at? So, yeah, that's the recommendation. Even a garage sale, make sure your stuff's priced. People don't want to just ask. You know, or if you got a table of everything that's 50 cents, put a big sign up, 50 cents an item, rather than uh, leaving it just up to people to ask. So, yeah. Anyway, just my opinion, I guess. But I think you're going to find it's a popular opinion. <laughs> People do want to make a decision, be able to make a decision on something. When, and see the tag. So anyway, that's about it, folks. Um, still got, I think I showed you the railway stuff. Got military stuff. That's some more stuff I do have to price. That's one of the 2% of stuff in here. It's not priced. So I do have to tag it. Like I said, probably why it's not selling real fast. So I do have to tag it. So, yeah, I'm guilty. I got 2% of the stuff in here that's, that isn't tagged and needs to be tagged. So that happens. But the majority, the vast majority, 98%, like I said, is probably is all priced. So, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. Please be sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos on antiquing, picking, thrifting, scrapping, etc. Take care, folks. Thanks for watching.